Today's video is all about pain and pleasure, when to use each and why. I'm John Vincent and this is Sales Copy Secrets. to my video inside a completely different location as you might have gathered if you watched my previous video if you didn't you're a sinner or a wretched person you should definitely check it out below penance and hail marys and all that stuff so check it out below but if you didn't know this i am kind of on a stay workation stay work i don't even know what, what that is but it's basically where i'm going to different parts of florida and working and checking out the scene and getting out of the rainy dreary place that we were in for the winter and also just looking for a really cool place to move so if you will excuse my extremely tan i'm getting more and more tan uh, it's not fake well actually i don't think about that tan yet but if you'll excuse the background changes and all that stuff you'll see over the next couple of weeks we will get into some really great content. Let's dive in right now. So today's topic is all about pain and pleasure. And this is super important if you are a copywriter or if you're looking for copywriting tips, tactics, or techniques, or if you're just a marketer looking to sell stuff, you need to understand pain and pleasure and why we are motivated by both and to which extent we're motivated by both. And very importantly, when you should avoid using pain-oriented copy. First of all, let's define what I mean by pain and pleasure. I mean, I kind of think that's obvious, but as it's related to copy. So pain copy is copy that talks about the fears that your prospect has, the struggles they have, the complaints they have, the pain that they're experiencing in their life regarding the specific thing that you are selling. Pleasure-based copy is the exact opposite. It's what they want to achieve, their hopes, their aspirations, their dreams. Hopes are very important. Hope is a very, very important thing solitarily, meaning just hope itself is super important to persuasion and super important to getting people to take action. However, this may come as a shock to you, 75% of our motivation comes from the avoidance of pain. Now, I don't like that. I didn't make the rules, sorry. I didn't control human evolution. Eh. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't too. Uh, but that's just the way things turned out. And we may evolve one day to be beyond that to where we're 50-50 or whatever. And there are some people that are. I think I'm much more a, a pleasure-based guy. I would like to think that, but more than likely I'm deceived because our little parts of our brain called the amygdala is kind of still running the show. Now that's the part of the brain that for, you know, I'm simplifying this a lot, but basically this is the part of the brain that heard a noise in the bushes and said, oh, run tiger. And it might've just been the wind, you know, eh, what are we going to do? But that part still controls you. So you are still motivated to avoid potential pain, avoid potential heartache, avoid potential suffering than you are to gain pleasure. So that's why people will stay in abusive relationships because they are actually more motivated to stay in a place that's more comfortable, that's less painful than the obvious horrible thing that they're in. I know it's terrible, but I am going to assume that you're gonna run with me on this. 75% pain, 25% pleasure. The problem is Facebook and Google aren't gonna run with you on this. So I'm gonna tell you how to solve that problem at the end of the video, so keep watching. Now, it's important to know that both pain and pleasure are necessary to talk on and to touch bases on in order to be fully persuasive. In other words, if I just said, hey, listen, if you suck at copywriting, if you can't get a copywriting gig, if you can't write a single sentence without feeling like you're a desperate loser, then what? <laughs> I got to say something, right? Well, then I've got something that's going to help you out of that. So notice how that naturally just transitions out of the horrible pain that I was describing to, hey, I've got something that will help you. Help. That's good. That's pleasure. I want that. So push-pull, we've talked about that a lot. Duality, we've talked about that a lot. That is the, the psychological states that we're entering into here now. But the question is, when do you use each? So let me give you a great example of how my assistant, who is very good at copy, gave me some ideas for this particular video. And one of the ideas that she gave me for uh, when you would never want to use pain is getting a greener lawn. Like, in other words, just general gardening or mowing or whatever you want to call it. And I immediately thought of a sentence or two sentences or three that I could use to open up a video sales letter or an email or any sort of persuasive based copy based on pain for getting a greener yard. So check this out. Are you tired of driving up to your house only to see a brown patchy, ugly yard greeting you after a long day of work? Does your yard embarrass you? Make you want to run and hide from your neighbors? Want a solution? Now, that's a very simple pain-based intro. I gave two very strong pain-based things, right? 
the Apache ugly greeting from a long day of work. Now notice that was kind of a cool little twist to the pain narrative. The pain narrative I was painting was all about the pain of the yard, but I put on top of that long, hard day of work. That is also pain. So it's a double whammy of pain. Pretty freaking cool, if you ask me. And then I just ended with, do you want a solution? Well, I've got good news. I got a great way to make your yard greener. Well, then I go right into the pleasure. So anything, I mean anything, even the most soft woo-woo thing that you can think of, I can turn into something painful. Not saying that you have to, but you can. So in reality, here are the rules. You should always go for pleasure, not necessarily first. I'll start a VSL or a sales letter or an email with pain all the time because again, that's the number one motivator. But you should always, always go to pleasure because hope still reigns eternal. You wanna make sure that you convey a lot of that hope. So the question really is when should you use pain as the dominant driver? And what I mean a dominant driver is simply that's gonna be more of where your copy is going to lead. Well, let me give you a few places where I do and you can. Doesn't mean you have to, but I believe this is where it will serve you the best. First of all, is if you are in a very high traffic, high competitive market like weight loss, I use pain all the time for weight loss. It doesn't mean that I never start a letter off by saying, hey, wouldn't it be great to feel and look 10 years younger? Well, sure, we can do that sometimes. But the reason why pain works here is because it allows you to differentiate better than pleasure, meaning you can say there's something that you don't know about that's causing all of your weight gain. And it's called X and X is terrible. And if you don't fix X, it can lead to this and that, and even some diseases. So you notice how that's ratcheting up the pain, right? Well, that's going to make somebody even more enthusiastic about taking you up on that offer, taking you up on listening to your pitch, for, for example, rather than simply saying, I need to drop 20 pounds. That may be true, but it's not pressing. It's not something that you wake up every single day going, oh, it's going to drive me crazy if I don't. But if I link that 20 pounds to something that's a medical problem or something that could, could cause like erectile dysfunction for men or if it can cause like uh, something really bad, equally bad for women, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but you get the picture. Well, now all of a sudden you're really motivated to listen to me, right? That's where pain can come in really handy. The second place that I like to use pain is in darker niches like self-defense or the prepper niche like survival. But you can even use positivity in a prepper niche. Okay, prepper into the world, you know, uh, everything's going to be falling apart. And, and you know, this is <laughs> preppers might all be right, by the way. But but it, uh, here is something you could say right now that would be pleasurable for a prepper. Check this out. You need to protect your family. You need to secure for them the future they deserve. That's why you need to do X. So I started off there with two sentences that are very, very positive about the family and what they deserve. I'm using words like deserve, which are very pleasurable words, very pleasure-centered words, and I'm about to tell them why the end of the world is coming. So you see, you can flip this on its head and use both, okay? Third place I like to use pain as the dominant driver is in short copy areas like emails and ads because they get more clicks. It's just 75, 25 again. You're probably gonna get more clicks to avoid something than you are to get something. Just is the way it is. And you could send them to a completely 75% pleasure-based uh, sales letter if you want to, but that still works. Now, speaking of pleasure-based sales letters, Here's where you want to avoid pain like the plague. Okay, uh, uh, get it, huh? And that's when you are running a sales letter or any sort of sales material on Facebook or Google. Facebook especially. Now, Facebook has a policy that basically says, we want our users to experience pleasure while they're on the site and not feel bad about themselves. Eh, you know, that really, <laughs> that really hamstrings a lot of marketing, to be honest with you, because it's important for us to make people aware that there is a problem. But Facebook doesn't like that. It doesn't give them a good user experience. Now, say what you will about Facebook, and goodness gracious knows I have and will continue. But nonetheless, we have to play by their rules if we're going to be on their platform. So let me give you an example of what you shouldn't say and then how you can turn it around to what you can say and still get a little bit of pain in that message. Because again, they don't like pain, they like pleasure. Here we go. First, I'm gonna tell you what you can say, sort of. You can almost get by with this. Right now, it's hit or miss. It depends on how, how much traffic you're running, to be honest with you. But then I'm gonna show you how to change it. I'm gonna show you why this is better than saying, hey, do you suck at copywriting? Or are you terrible at this? Or are you starving because you can't get copywriting gigs? That's what they don't want, okay? They don't want you to say you and something negative. And by the way, the example I'm gonna give you obviously is in copywriting. So let me turn this in around to what you can say, sort of, 
on Facebook, and then I'll turn it into what you absolutely can say, at least as of the time of this recording on Facebook, and you'll see the difference. Here we go. Want to improve your copywriting skills? Increase your chances at landing higher paying copywriting jobs or gigs? Avoid writing blah, blah copy that doesn't convert? Then I would go into something positive. Then I have something that's going to really make you excited. It's gonna, you're going to love this. It's called blank. You could go into the pleasure-based stuff there. Now, notice how I did this. First of all, I included the word your, which is now a dirty word in the eyes of Facebook and Google. It makes it personal. So I took it out of the realm of the abstract and into the realm of the absolutely personal by saying, do you want to improve your copywriting skills? Okay, that's good. That's, that's a good thing. Improve skills, good. Facebook's going to be eh, okay on that because I didn't say, do you want to become a million dollar copywriter? That's where they're going to frown, okay? So they're pretty okay with saying improving skills. Do you want to increase your chances at landing a higher paying copywriting gig? Okay, again, I didn't say increase your chances of landing a, a 10 figure gig or something like that. So it was just higher paying. So I can probably get by with that even with the word your in there. But notice how I frame the negative. Avoid writing blah, blah copy that doesn't convert. Notice what word I left out of that. You or your. It's not personalized. I just said avoid writing blah, blah copy that doesn't convert. Notice I didn't say blah, blah copy that let you end up broke and dead in the street or something like that. They won't allow that, right? But blah, 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 copy that doesn't convert, it's, it's pain, but it's not that painful. So I'm right on the edge of this. But then I'm going to take those three sentences and turn them into Facebook compliant sentences, 100% for sure, at least according to, well, check with your attorney. <laughs> Always check with an attorney, but at least from what I understand and from what I know as of this very moment, check this out. Want to master copywriting? Increase the chance of landing higher paying copywriting jobs or gigs? Avoid writing blah, blah copy that doesn't convert? Then you need to listen to what I'm going to tell you. Do you see how that sounded different? Okay, I had to take out the word your in those first two sentences and I made them generic. Now I'm making promises to essentially no one. I'm just saying it is to the person because I'm saying want to blank, but I'm really not. You see what I'm saying? I think it's silly for them to be down on you and you order so much, but it is what it is. So when you take it out, you have more of a chance to get it through compliance. So that is a way that you can use pain even in Facebook and where you should use pain and pleasure in your copy. And you're gonna wanna stick around for my next video. And in case you don't know what it is, guess what? I don't either, but I know you're gonna wanna stick around for it because it's gonna help you make more money in copywriting. That's a promise. By the way, I'm John Benson. And as always, I'm here to help make you unignorable.